Double D. <laughs> you guys are unfrozen. I appear to be unfrozen. Let's go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. We did it. <laughs> All right, Danny. Internet, All right. Baby. Hey, hey. Can I, before, before ahead, we man. start, let me caveat this with, you know, we don't expect that, dude. You're the radio guy. I mean, it's not the team. This is a whole new world. That's what I say to Maz. Don't worry, you're radio guy. But thanks for joining <laughs> Thanks for joining us, buddy. It's uh, always an absolute pleasure to listen to you describe a game, do an interview or whatever, and uh, can't wait to pick your brain. So go ahead. All right. All right. Thanks for having me. Danny, it happened uh, happened for you back in 2000, got in the booth for the first time, and here it is, 2021, and uh, does it get any better than opening day for you? No, and to have fans back, it's so hard. You know, I know we've talked about it, just the whole experience last year of no fans in the stands. It was, I mean, they were truly nice. It was surreal when they were on the road and we were at Comerica Park calling the games from an empty stadium, an empty booth, an empty stadium. We were probably one of six people in the whole ballpark. Uh, and even in the home games, I mean, let's face it, they did all they could, but cardboard cutouts and artificial noise doesn't replace fans. So to start with 8,000 and Hopefully we build from there. It's, it's just I get so excited thinking about opening day and the start of a, a back to 162 game season back with fans in the stands. And it's going to increase as the season goes on. I just I'm so fired up. I can't wait to get started. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, we've seen with a lot of other professional sports, like they're starting to turn their announcers into going to the studio and not even traveling with the teams or being live at the ballpark. I feel with baseball, like if they took that guys, if they took that from you guys, it just takes a whole lot of the atmosphere away from calling that game. You you have to be at the game. This is what I, I think maybe some people are missing is as they talk about. Well, this could be the future. I know for, they're talking about that. You know, for some TV and you know. Okay, let's stop right there. You you're paying a play by play guy to, especially on radio, paint the picture and as much as possible bring your listeners into the ballpark where you are. I have to be able to feel the game. I don't know how else to describe it. I have to. That's why I open my window on a 32 degree day. Yeah. I want to feel yeah. the game as much as possible. That's step number one. Step number two is I've got, I you know, you, you're watching everything in the ballpark. And when I'm watching a monitor that has a high home camera angle to my left, and all the players are about this big on the screen, uh, I can't tell you if that guy at first base is going back to the bag as Matthew Boyd is delivering the pitch because he can't read his move. I can't tell you that that fly ball to left center got knocked down by the wind by an easy 20, 30 feet because the wind's blowing in. I can't tell you that that guy lost the ball in the sun or how the ball got through the infield or whether they shifted out with two strikes, whatever it might be. All those things you want to be able to describe, you can't do it. So I feel like I'm at, you know, I don't know, 50, 60 percent of where I need to be or want to be. People are like, well, it sounded fine. Okay, it may have sounded fine. Great. I'm glad you thought so, but it was not the same. Grapefruit League play, Dan, is uh, one of my favorite things. But I know it, once it gets rolling at this time of the year, I know you basically you've had it. You're ready to get on that plane and get back here to Detroit. And uh, what do we got to look forward to as far as the Tigers go? I know they had a couple of uh, things happen today. They sent down Paredes. They sent down uh, Jake Rogers to AAA Toledo. Uh, Tehran makes the team now. What happens? Give us give us a little scoop on this new Tiger team. Well, I, I think I'll start with the Tehran uh, signing and what he means to this team because I think this whole year is going to be about how do you cover those roughly 1,500 innings that your staff needs to cover in a typical baseball 162-game season. That's going to be the big issue, and they're going to be managing those innings. It's not only the veterans – or not only the young guys, but it's the veterans – those guys are probably going to be able to, to go back to maybe previous levels. They're going to be watching everyone individually. The younger guys are going to be probably in that one, I don't know, 110 to 130 inning range. Again, all on an individual basis. So Tehran adds a lot to this staff. He had a bad year last year, seven terrific, consistent seasons with the Atlanta Braves before that. And he's back to throwing, you know, he's he figured out what was wrong. That it was a shoulder issue that he basically fixed. The velocity is back. This guy knows how to pitch, and it's going to be a, going to mean a lot to this staff to see a veteran like this and how he goes about his business. He's never been a big power arm, but he knows how to get outs. And these are the types of things they're trying to teach the young guys who want to get, as he's AJ Hinch has talked about with uh, Spencer Turnbull, quit trying to get the strikeout yeah. on the first pitch of the at bat. You know that doesn't work. So. They can learn from these guys. I think the thing to watch for Tiger fans, I mean, what, 
what have we learned about this team in the spring? It's, it's kind of hard to say, especially on the offensive side, but this staff is putting together, it's a very detailed plan. It's, and this isn't any reflection on the past staff. This is just a new staff with different ideas and how they want to implement it and the things they want to accomplish this year. That process of putting all those things into effect on the pitching side or the hitting side or the defensive side, it takes time. But I think the biggest thing for fans, watch how this team progresses in the areas where they really want them to get better uh, as the season progresses in, in all the different areas. It's been fascinating listening to A.J. Hinch talk about the work that goes on daily and some of the things that they're watching and some of the things that they're working on with players. Take Jake Rogers as an example. They wanted him so badly. I don't think there's any question. A.J. Hinch wanted him so badly to be the backup catcher, and he worked with him. And, and, you know, Jake Rogers has been working on his hitting. It just didn't work. It just he could not produce at the plate. I don't think he showed enough defensively uh, to win that backup job. Grayson Griner clearly outperformed him. But, I mean, you know, these are the things that they've been working on this spring. You know, it's going to be some interesting decisions at the back end of the bullpen. Joey Menez and Brian Garcia have struggled this spring. And it's not an automatic that they that they make this team. So how are you embracing the concepts? How well are you applying some of the things that they're trying to teach you? Not just your performance this spring, but how have you progressed in the areas where they really want you to progress? Isak Paredes had a position right there for him. Yep. He couldn't. Yep. He didn't hit. He didn't hit all spring. If he'd hit a, anything this spring, he'd be on this team. But he struggled. So, he, you know, A.J. Hinch has said, these are competitions you know, we want you on this. He made it very clear. We want Paredes on this team, and, and he just didn't perform. And at some point, you had to say, well, you, you didn't do the job to earn that spot on the opening day roster. We're talking to radio voice of the Detroit Tigers, Double D himself, <laughs> Dan Dickerson. And you mentioned A.J. Hinch. I'm going to lay off that and go to the big fella, Miguel Cabrera. Obviously, the joke around here is, oh, Mickey's in shape and he's at training camp. But with A.J. Hinch coming in, there was an article in the paper earlier or, uh, last week about how excited Miggy is to play for somebody that has the pedigree. What have you noticed maybe for us that know Miguel Cabrera the most on this team, know what he's capable of, stick brought up 13 home runs away from 500. Have you noticed something different? Because sometimes when the voice changes as the manager maybe an attitude change or have you noticed anything from Miguel no I just think that the, I could go back to the the first priority was for AJ Hinch was to you know get those lines of communication open it's not always easy to get a Miguel go hold of Miguel in the offseason but also let him know that he he wanted him to play in the field this year and as small as that sounds playing maybe two three times a week at first base I think it makes a big difference for Miguel Cabrera I think he was pretty fired up by that. He kept sending AJ videos in the off season of him playing first base, you know, working out in the off season. Uh, so, and I, here's an example. Yesterday in the game, ground ball to first. Miguel's been playing there, you know, a couple times a week. He first and third makes the play, charges. He's got the runner trap between first and third. Runs over, tags him out. Almost gets a double play at third base as the runner from first tries to go first to third. And then, I mean, it was a good play. It was a good, solid play. Didn't waste a throw, got the out, almost got a double play. As he goes back to first, the, the crowd's like, yeah, Miggy. You know, a little <laughs> doff the cap as he goes back to first. I mean, that to me is what he misses. He misses that energy on the Fine. field, engaging with umpires, anybody who will listen to him at any moment. And it sounds like a small thing, but I really think that's going to help him overall, his overall game. I think it's, he feels like a more complete player. Call me crazy. I know what his level of performance has been the last four years. It's, it's a new lower level of production. I get that. I still think there's that 850 OPS season still in there, and that would be well above average. I think, And I'm basing that on the fact that Hall of Fame guys in history have generally been productive through their late 30s. Does he get the 13 <laughs> homers and 134 hits? Yes. Nice. Confidently, yep, he will. Too. Confidently yes. And simple, yeah. yes. <laughs> yes. Right. And you brought up a great point, Dan, as an athlete and a guy where you got to look at Miguel Cabrera. He's a big kid, right? We all know that. Yeah. He's, a, he's a goofy, and he's got to feel a part of it. And when he feels right. a part of that youth, and we all know it because he's also, too, is when he wants to shut it down and he wants to pout or whatever, there's two different Miguels, but it's sort of <laughs> along the lines of what we used to say about Sergey. 
Fedorov, right? Is you got to remember he's like 16 years old mentally, or he wants to <laughs> wants to be that way and that energy. And you got to so instead of fighting it, surround it. And the right. beauty is, is that right. AJ Hinch recognizes that. And if we see Miguel Cabrera being a kid, that just goes throughout yes. the lineup. Yeah, so. Miguel Cabrera and Jose Altuve does. are my favorite combination. When Altuve's on first and Cabrera's on first, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's my favorite thing in the world. And they're messing around with each oh, other. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're playing with each other. Altuve's like a midget. He picks them up. Like, it's just funny. Uh, just don't hold on to his jersey. Yeah, just, don't, just don't, don't, don't touch his jersey, right? Don't touch Altuve's jersey. So, no I, mas. No mas. We brought up A.J. Hinch a couple times, and, you know, I don't want to bring up negative things about the Tigers. Yeah, bring it up. But okay. it's, it's the elephant in the room is there any lingering effect from the Astros and what happened there with Hinch coming over into our locker room or is it just eh, you know no. it is what it is he owned it we're moving on right he owned it and he told the players hey this is part of my story when we're going to look back at my career it has nothing to do with the Detroit Tigers or you and I think the biggest thing he did is just they they hit the ground running this coaching staff in spring so he talked about all the things they wanted to do they did a lot of that homework. They communicated with players in the off season. So when I think all the players saw was, wow, here's a manager, here are coaches coming from the Dodgers who won a World Series, coming from the Nationals who won a World Series, coming from the Astros who won a World Series. These are the concepts that they are bringing with them from world championship organizations. And they are as prepared as anybody we've ever seen you should see George Lombard's defensive positioning chart. I mean, it's, it's off the charts good. And these are the things that, so, you know, whatever there might have been at the beginning in terms of, ah, what about the, no, it's gone because he's challenging these guys to be better. He, he, you know, part of it's on you, but you've got to have it in you to want to get better. And here are the tools. It's not just that we're going to hope you get better. Here are the tools. And they're so good. I think these guys are like, wow, this is a whole nother level. And they bought into it. And again, the results may not be there right away. We haven't always seen it this spring. I will say one thing that's going to be reflective, and A.J. Hinch has talked about this. Your team's identity is almost always kind of caught up in your defense and how well you play it and how you don't give uh, bases away and how you run the bases. They've been very aggressive this spring. It's hard to tell sometimes what an offense is going to do from spring training because I'm telling you, the Arizona-Florida stats are nuts. It, look, Just take a look someday and see where the Yankees are and see where the Pittsburgh Pirates are, and you tell me which offense you think is going to be better this year. <laughs> <laughs> or I guess Pittsburgh's in Florida, but pick, pick any other team out in, in Kansas City. You know, I don't think they're going to be as good as the Yankees. But the base running, I do think, is he's absolutely sending a signal. They've stolen 18 of 21 uh, stolen base attempts, and they're very aggressive running first to third. And those are areas where you will see, I think, some improvement right away. But it's what he wants to do to try to establish that team identity. Dan Dickerson joins us, Tigers radio voice, 21 years now. I don't know where the hell the time has gone, but it's awesome. Only one guy could have uh, taken over for the great Ernie Harwell and not have a complaint uh, from any Detroit fan. And I, that mean, that's, means the world. I mean, you are – Phenomenal, Dan. So besides that, I don't mean to kiss your ass or nothing, but I mean it's the <laughs> truth. But talk about this new kid, Akil Badu. I love the name. Four home runs already. And now what happens now with Victor Reyes going forward? You know, I, I think to, to start the season, probably both make it. That's five outfielders, and I have been pretty uh, clear in my thinking that this is not a team that's going to carry five outfielders to start the year, and then I realize, okay, they might be able to, because they've got a few off days and they won't need as many pitchers, they might be able to get away with it for a couple of weeks. And A.J. Hinch has basically said the same thing. So you're delaying a decision for a couple of weeks, and it probably doesn't buy you enough time to make a decision about Akil Badu. Uh, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of a, I've been thinking about this. Akil Badu clearly has the skills to play at the major league level. Is he going to be able to jump from... 29 games above low A ball. That's all he's got. 29 games at high A ball in 2019 before Tommy John surgery shut him down. Make that jump to the major leagues. The odds are stacked against him. We all know that. It's not a great system, this Rule 5 thing. The idea is it, it helps the kid because if he's blocked in an organization, they can't hold on to him forever but it doesn't really help in his development because he's got to stay in the major league team when he might not be ready. Like Victor Reyes a few years ago. But dude's going to be, I'm almost sure, a major league player. 
But the only way you can find out if you're the Tigers is, you know, give them some at-bats. Uh, as soon as this season starts, it's a fourth outfielder. But they like Victor Reyes. I mean, they really do. You know, he, he's not going to be a great hitter, but he's got a line drive stroke. He can steal a base. They like his defense because he's prepared. He does all those little things, the pre-pitch preparation that they've talked about. Um, so I I think once those two weeks are up, I mean, you drafted Akil Badu for a reason, and you probably won't be able to make a decision after two weeks whether he's going to stay or be offered back to the Twins then Victor Reyes might might have to go down because they're going to have to add another pitcher by the end of April. Well, Dan, not to uh, piggyback too hard off of Maz kissing your ass, I also want to kiss your ass for a second because <laughs> my dad would kick my ass if I didn't take this opportunity to let you know that my dad passed away about three years ago, but he was a truck driver, drove around the entire country for Reliable, and he would tell me every time he came back in town, listening to Dan Dickerson on Tigers Radio is the best baseball broadcast around the entire country. So, you know, he listened intently to all the games, too, so it's not... It's not a flighting opinion. Like, he, he really loved the way you broadcast games. So I had to say that because I know if he was watching right now, he would be like, tell him. Tell him he's the best in the country. So you are the best in the country. You know, I, I appreciate that. I always like hearing from people, especially like, hey, you, you made my drive, my long drive to, you know, fill in the blank. Uh, made it up north or across the country. You made it go a little quicker tonight. I'm like, good. I killed a couple of hours. That's that's what I'm here for. <laughs> we'll give you a wow for Jim Price. How's that? <laughs> but, it, but I think that... <laughs> But I think it goes back to what you said to the beginning about what you missed about how last year, you know, you know, was sort of trying because what you do so well and, you know, to, to Ernie Harwell before you is paint that picture, right? You know, which is the greatest right. trick, you know, I'm the and you could still get away. But I remember Ernie Harwell listening to him, which we all did. Oh, is, yeah. I was like, man, he knows everybody in this <laughs> Freaking state, <laughs> Jill dude, from dude. Yeah, oh, and, right. and I always thought like I didn't know that till I was twenty something. <laughs> just right? up. But, I, but I think that that when we talk about when we're talking about earlier in the show about giving about what's gone on downtown and about Dan Gilbert putting money in for the people and about but this is what a great city. story that is by the way that, that I just saw the headline as I joined you guys. Wow, that's that's a real wow, and that that gives me chills. How how neat that is. Yeah, and then you've seen. So one, the one, la, the last question I had for you, Dan, is because sometimes when things we don't realize what we got till it's sort of gone. So what did last season? What did you like, Dan Dickerson? You know, what did you miss the most, or what are you looking forward to the most to be there for like opening day in a ballpark? with people that and, and yeah. beyond beyond you know uh uh looking to see if boyd's move is holding the guy on first or anything baseball is there <laughs> right. is there is there something well, I, I think it, it, it starts with the fans there it really does it just starts with the fans and you know i, I think the thing that I, anybody who's in this job the, the the fun part of this job is those daily conversations you have with people who know this game at, at that high level. I, I, I know the game a little bit, but I'll never know it at the same level as those who have played it or manage it or coach it. And to learn from them on a daily basis, those little interactions, the unexpected, the best days are when you've gone down to the clubhouse, had a couple conversations, then you ran into somebody you didn't expect to run into, you had a couple questions, you ended up having a conversation you really weren't expecting to have. That's a good day at the ballpark. And then usually you just got a little extra pep in your step and you get back to the booth to fill out your lineup card. Those are the good days. That's what I've really missed. Those aren't going to be coming back. It doesn't look like probably anytime real soon. Uh, but but those are that's the real fun part of the job. We're social creatures, right? And and in baseball, all those connections you've made through the years, that's that's what I've missed with the face to face. The Zoom, I'm I'm thankful for it. But I, I miss the face-to-face. -face. And then the fans, just to be able to wave at fans when you're down on the field and you're walking up the tunnel or uh, just interactions with fans on the concourse. If I'm down there, I don't know, looking for a buddy who's coming up, whatever it might be. Uh, I really miss that. And it, I just to spread the love of Tigers baseball, you know, I've, I've been just so blessed to be able to do this for 21 years, now 22 this year, uh, to be able to kind of spread that joy of Tiger baseball and summer on the radio, uh, it's it's the best. And I, I've missed the interactions with fans, and I can't wait to get that started again on opening day. 
Dan, before we let you go, can you talk to Rob Manfred and ask him why the National League doesn't use a designated hitter, why it's still 162 games, and why did he take away the extra playoffs? Can you just ask him that for me, please? You you betcha, Tommy. You betcha. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it, man. How do you like some of the rule changes? Which yeah. is your favorite? You know it. Come on, DH? Come on. Wait. Which is your favorite rule change of the ones they're going to try out this year? None. How about... <laughs> Don't touch my baseball. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I'm okay with the extra inning man on second. How about that? I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind that one. <laughs> well, thank you, the Dave Dickerson, guy. for uh, joining us today on The Hook, and I cannot wait to be in the backyard listening to the sweet sounds of Dan Dickerson this summer and hopefully the Tigers get some wins in there and we just have a good time and we all got to get to the ballpark just to get those sounds and those smells again. Hey, it's Darren McCarty's birthday, by the way, on opening day, Dan. Make sure you get a shout out. No way. 49, baby, opening day. Yeah, Yeah, that'll be good. (laughs) April Fool's baby. How about that? (laughs) That explains a lot. Now now you just like that. There's that nugget. I know, and I couldn't agree with you more about the interactions about the chance meetings, talk and shop, learning things, but also to walking around and meeting the people that either you've known before or they know hey. you because you are an icon in this town and can't wait to hear you <laughs> on the mic again and keeping old Jimmy Price there. Uh, <laughs> keeping old Jimmy Jimmy keeping old Jimmy in line. So but again he's a catcher, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Guys, great talking with you. Have me on any time because I love talking baseball. Thanks, Dan. We love talking to you. Thank you, Dan. Be safe, man. Coming home. All right, guys. Take care. All All right. right. And Darren McCarty.